Hello one and all, welcome back to Under the Hood of Python, a guide for complete beginners. In this session, we are going to create a project to calculate GPA. What is GPA? GPA is a grade point average that's assigned to students in universities. Let us quickly jump into the Jupyter Notebook to start making up a GPA calculator. Here is a Jupyter Notebook that provides us the details on different operations that we are going to perform in this GPA calculator project. Let us take a quick glimpse of what they are before entering into the solution. Here we go. In this project, we are going to implement a grade point average calculator for a semester based on subject credit and subject grade. So GPA requires two parameters or two inputs. One is the credit and the grade assigned. Okay. We are going to cover the usage of defined variables with multiple data types, typecasting variables, decimal variables to further improvise the accuracy and different arithmetic operations using one of the other new module called as random module. So to start with, we are going to first import rand int function from a random module. We now know how to use a module and import a function. And then we are going to again use rand int function from the random module to generate the number of registered courses between the range of one and three. Followingly, we are going to also assign a credit value using the rand int function itself for the subjects based on the registered courses. Assigned grades secured for each subject again using random module but with a different function termed as rand range. Okay. And then we are going to now take a look at what are the different data types of assigned grades. Followingly, we will use this formula to compute grade point for each subject. How do we compute it? We are just going to simply multiply subject credit and subject grade. This is to compute grade point for all the subjects. Now how do we find the grade point average? We are going to sum up all the grade points computed and divide by total credits for the semester. Fair enough. Next thing what we are going to do is we are going to compute the grade point for each subject using the above provided formula and find the data types of the computed grade points. Once that's done, we will find the sum of individual subjects to create total grade points and also sum of credits assigned to each subject to find the total credits. Followingly, we are going to compute grade point average by dividing the above two computed values. And finally, print the computed GPA and the type of GPA. Once this process is completed, we now are going to add some kind of a grace value in the range of zero to one to the already computed grade points for each subjects. That means we are going to give some grace points to each of the subjects for the students. Okay. And then we are now going to again check the data type of the grade points. Once again, we are going to recompute the grade points and the total credits again and printing the results. Once the total grade points are recomputed, we are going to compute again the total grade point average using the total credits. After these two operations are recomputed, we will now remove the newly added grace value from the grade point. And again, we are going to print the type of these grade points for each subject. Once we are back with the original value of grade points, we will now import a decimal module and use the decimal function from the module. Now what we will do with this decimal uh, function is, we are going to use this decimal function and get a decimal value and try to add it with a floating point value. And we will see whether we are going to get any result or not. If we are not going to get any result and if we see or face some kind of a glitch, then we will convert this floating point number into a decimal and reperform the addition. Once the addition operation is completed between a converted floating point and the decimal, we are going to import get context function from decimal module. After which we are going to set the precision of the current program to four by using get context dot precision. Now, like how we added some grace value using a floating point number in our previous step, we are now going to add the same or a similar grace value using decimal function. Followingly, we are going to print the type of the grade points after the addition of the decimal value or addition of the grace value. And once the grade points are printed out and we figure out the type of the grade point, we are going to compute the total grade point and total credits. After which we are going to recompute grade point average. Once you complete the above set of instructions, then congratulations, you will be done with your first tiny calculator project. Try writing the Python instructions for above described operations. In next few seconds, we are going to take a look at the solution for each of the described instruction. Let us start answering each of the instruction with our Python program. How do we import random function from the random module? As we saw in our previous lecture, we will use from keyword to take up a module. In this case, it's random and import rand int function from the random module. Let us now execute this cell. The cell got executed successfully without any error. 
Let's get into the next instruction. Use the randing function from random module to generate the number of registered courses ranging between 1 and 3. Let us now create a variable called as number of registered courses and assign it to randint function which is imported from a random module. And this randint function requires two parameters. In general, how do we get to know the behavior of a function or the required number of parameters of a function? Jupyter Notebook helps us to understand that. Where does Jupyter Notebook provide all those details? Here we go. When we press Shift tab in case of a Windows system, that's going to provide the signature of the function along with which it also provides the description if the function maintains it. If you want to know more description about it, select this plus icon that gives the complete details about the function along with the signature of the function and the description of it. Okay. Uh, as said for this uh, randint function, it requires two arguments. Let us now provide the arguments as 1 and 3 because we want the number of registered courses to be randomly picked between the range 1 and 3. Okay, let us execute this cell. The execution must be successful without any errors. We can now print the value of this number of registered courses to verify what is the randomly picked value. Let us now print it, number of registered courses. And we are going to see the result as 1. Maybe we don't want one course, we want uh, more than one course. Let us execute the same cell again. It's still going to pick it up as 1. Let us re-execute it so that it increases the value in its random pick. So that's what happened now. We got the random value as 3 in this case. Let us retain this value of number of registered courses. Okay. On the same lines, let us use randint function to assign credit value. But this time, the range of values from which the randint picks, picks up the integer value and returns it should be between 1 to 5. Let us see how do we do it. We will create a variable termed as credits for subject 1 and use the same randint function from random module and pass the arguments as 1 comma 5. That means the randint function picks up an integer value randomly in the range 1 to 5 inclusive of both. Okay. And we have two more subjects which are remaining. We will also assign a randint function to each of them. Credits for subject 2 is again rand int of 1 comma 5. Similarly for subject 3, the credit value will be picked up from rand int of 1 comma 5. Let us now execute this cell so that subject 1 and subject 2 along with subject 3 gets the credit value. Okay. This must get executed successfully without any errors. Now it's time for us to assign grades secured for each of these subject but not using random but using rand range function for each of these courses. Okay, let's consider that there is one student who has got some grade values for each of these subjects in a semester. Let us proceed ahead and assign those grades for the student using a function called as rand range. Let us term the grade assigned for subject 1 as grade underscore subject underscore 1 equal to rand range of 1 comma 10 with a step size of 2. What do we mean by this? This is a bit similar to what rand int does but the change between the rand int and rand range is rand range doesn't include 10 for the generation of the random value. That means inclusive of the start and exclusive of the end index. Whereas in case of rand int it is inclusive of both. And the former behavior is something which is undesired in case of python and rand range can be considered as a kind of fix for such kind of execution by rand int. Okay, with this detail, let us proceed ahead and create two more subject grades using the variable termed as grade underscore subject underscore 2 and have it assigned to the same function called as rand range in the range of 1 to 10. Followingly, let us create another subject grade, again reassigning it to the same function called as rand range. Let us proceed ahead and execute this cell. We are going to see an error called as rand range is not defined. Why do we see this error? Any idea? Yes. From the random module, we just imported a function called as randint, but we never imported the function rand range. So what are we supposed to do now? Let us proceed ahead and import the rand range function from random module. Okay. So after this instruction, we must not see any kind of error because we already have rand range function available in our program. Let us check the data type of the grades of subjects at this stage of the program. How do we find the type of a variable in a program? We have this function called as type and we can either pass the static value or the variable name to it. Let's say I'm going to pass grade underscore subject one and print this value. Similarly, let us, try, let us print the type of subject two's grade and type of subject three's grade. If we could see the result value, it says that it belongs to a class integer. Reason being everything in Python is an object and thus these 
subject grades are also integer object out of integer class. Now let us proceed ahead and compute GPA or grade point average. How do we calculate it? We have a formula depicted here to do that. First of all, before creating the grade point average, we must compute something called as grade point for every subject. How do we calculate it? Grade point is simply nothing but product of subject credit and subject grade. Okay, so once the grade point is computed for all the subjects, then what we can do is we can take the sum of credits of all the subjects and sum of grade point of all the subjects, then divide sum of grade point of all the subjects by total credits to get something called as grade point average. With this formula details, let us proceed ahead and compute the grade point for each subject by taking the product of credit assigned along with the subject grade. Let us name the grade point for subject one as GP underscore subject underscore one equal to product of credit for subject underscore one and grade secured by the student for subject one. Similarly, grade point for subject two is nothing but credits for subject two and the grade got or secured by the student for subject two. Similarly is subject three, wherein grade point for subject three is nothing but the product of credit secured for subject three and grade assigned for subject three for the student. Okay, let us now compute this formula for each of the grade point computation and we must not see any error and must get executed successfully. After which, let us try to find the data type of the computed grade point for each of the subjects. Let's say I'm going to use the print statement inside which I'm going to place the type function for each of the grade points calculated above. Okay, this is for subject one. Here is the grade points data type for subject two. Here is the grade points data type for subject three. If we could see here, still the data type points to integer object. At this stage, let us wind up this lecture by having a quick look at what are the different operations that we have covered and take a look at the different other operations in the next lecture. Okay, from where did we start? We started by importing the rand int function from random module. Followingly, we took a look at the rand int usage to assign the number of registered courses for the student. Followingly, we also um, assigned some set of credit values for subject one, two, and three for a student. And also we use the function termed as rand range from the same random module to provide or assign grade for each of the subjects for the student. And then we took a look at what is the data type of the grade which is created. Followingly, we got to know what is the grade point uh, formula and what is the grade point average formula. Here we computed the grade point formula and took a look at again the data type of it. Still the data type remains the same. With this, let us wind up this lecture and continue the remaining part of the project in the coming lecture. Okay, till then, have a nice time. Take care of yourself. See you in the next lecture.